Hey guys, welcome back. So today I'm out here and I'm, I'm taking some soil samples. I'm gonna get some soil samples and get those sent in. And I am gonna take a sample of this pasture right behind our bank barn that we just fenced in this fall. And we got our goats and our chickens and our, our steers out here in this pasture. And then um, the hay field that we cut last year, I'm gonna take a soil sample of that and see how the hay field is doing the soil in that field. And then we have another field that we're gonna plant in hay this fall. So I wanna get a soil sample of that field and see exactly what I need to do to amend that field so that when I plant the hay that it'll grow well. So that's what we're doing today. And I've got, I ended up buying a uh, soil sample probe. I think I was gonna, what I've decided to do is I, I wanna really do some soil samples and and uh, record those through the years and see how things go. And so I, I bought a soil sample probe off of Amazon. And um, the bad thing was is it, does, it didn't come marked on the depth. And for hay, everything I've read for hay and for pasture, you only need a four inch deep sample. So what I've done is I've taken a chisel and I've just put some dents in here to help mark it uh, so I know how deep to go. Uh, normally in like tillage, in normal farm fields, since it's all tilled up, they go about six inches. So um, that's what I'm doing today, taking little core samples with this sample probe, and then I'm collecting them up. I think I've got about nine core samples here uh, that I've taken throughout this field. And now I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna move over to the hay field. And while we're over there, we'll go ahead and check the hay field and see how it's doing. So the hay field looks pretty good. There's a little bit of a bare spot here. There's a few bare spots here and there, but we got our grass coming up through. We got our alfalfa coming up. Now, one thing I have noticed is the alfalfa does not look very good. It's getting a lot of bug damage. We didn't have that last year. So as you look over the hay field, you can see it's looking pretty good. The grass has come up real well, and it's uh, probably at least two inches over the top of my knee. And this is orchard grass, timothy grass, and alfalfa. It's meant to be a high quality hay. Now the alfalfa is not very good quality for sure this year. It's got a, with all the bug damage that's on it, at least right now. And, um, but the grass is way thicker than it was last year. So last year was the first time we cut this hay field and the alfalfa was very dominant last year. And it was drier as well. But this year, there's definitely more grass in here right now. When you just look across it, it looks like a grass hay field. The, the alfalfa is shorter and down inside. But uh, overall, even though the alfalfa is not as good, I think I'm still gonna get some good hay out of it. Um, now the next hay field we plant over there is not gonna have alfalfa in it. It'll be a lot easier to cut and dry uh, without the alfalfa in it. it. Just, you won't have to be so gentle with it. So we're gonna just gonna plant that hay field in grass, a grass mixture. So here's a piece of the alfalfa. And I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see this on camera, but it has holes in the leaves on this one. These, these leaves are all ate off. So definitely a lot of bug damage this year on the alfalfa. It's not looking very good. We did not have this last year. So I know people in the past have asked me what I do about some kind of bug that eats the alfalfa. And I'm not sure exactly what that is. I'm sure people in the comments will tell me exactly what's happening here. So I really don't wanna come out here and spray insecticides on here to try to prevent this from happening and then feed this to my livestock or sell it to somebody else, uh, to their livestock, because I was selling quite a bit of this hay and um, uh, out of this field. So I'm not sure what my choices are. Without using insecticide, I'm not sure what my choices are. I'm not sure what this is gonna do. Is this just gonna hurt my crop a little bit or is this gonna kill my alfalfa off? Um, anybody that has uh, some knowledge about this, or suggestions or whatever, go ahead and put that in the comments below. I'd appreciate it. All right, so now we've taken a look at the hay field. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the probe and I'm gonna run around this hay field. I'm gonna take probably nine, 10 core samples, uh, try to spread it out where I take the core samples. And then uh, we're gonna move on to the field that we're gonna be planting this fall. So the other hay field is just through this narrow opening on the other side. 
So there's a few of these thorn trees that are growing up in here and I cut them down every year and they want to keep coming back. So I'm going to come in here and cut them out by hand so they don't pop any tires and then we'll come back here with the tractor. We'll brush hog this and we'll have a nice path to our, our new field, our new hay field that's going to be over here. So this three acre field, we've had that rented out and it was planted in corn last year. So there's a bunch of corn stalks mixed in here. We'll have to disc it up real well before we plant our hay. Um, and this field actually runs down and runs right into another field. And the same farmer would just plant that field straight into this field. So down at the very end, we're gonna have to mark the property line. And we're gonna put some posts up on the property line over there so it's clearly marked so that they don't come on this side and try to plow or try to spray anything because that did happen. And if you've been following along, the first time we planted that hay field, they ended up coming in there and they sprayed it and killed it off. So we don't want that to happen again. So we're gonna be putting in some fence posts along that side over there. Uh, but right now, real quick, let me get this last soil sample so I can run it uh, over to the fertilizer company so they can send it in. So the farmer that rented this is a no-till farmer. So, you know, there's a ton of crop residue on top. So I'm trying to find a spot that is fairly bare of, of any residue and uh, go down four inches and then pull out my core. So this core sample the very tip has just a very slightly smaller diameter. So once it gets past the tip, it actually moves through pretty easy. So you can slide your core sample forward. You can see you got a nice four inch core sample. So all we're doing is just gonna take that, drop that in our Ziploc bag and just get a good variety, you know, a good uh, sampling throughout different places in the field. All right, I got my last soil sample here, so I'm gonna go run those over to, so I can send them in to get tested. And then we'll come back either later today or tomorrow, we're gonna go find the property markers, the, uh, the survey pins that are in the ground. We're gonna try to find those. We're gonna string a string out there. We're gonna put in some posts to mark the property line. So I'm back out here today to try to find our survey pins so that we can uh, mark our property line over here. So to drive through here, I need to cut out some of these thorn trees that are in here. There's little, small, short little thorn trees, honey locust trees that are growing up. And uh, I'm gonna cut those off right at the base. Then I'm gonna put a little bit of stump killer on there. This is Tordon RTU. This is what I always use on the honey locust trees. Now there is a thornless variety of honey locusts. And if you're gonna, if you want honey locust trees, you wanna plant the thornless variety. So let's go through here, uh, see if I can find them all and cut them. And then hopefully we can drive through here and not get a flat tire. So I tried to zoom in here so you can see it, but it has these little leaves on here. It's like a, it has multiple little leaves down the side. Real easy to recognize when you're looking for it. It doesn't look like the grass. So uh, probably get as close to the ground as possible. Cut this out. But this does have little, uh, little needles on it. When they're small like that, they're like needles. So there's actually two of them right here next to each other. And they grow off the roots. That's why you, you find these, is they actually come off the roots of a bigger plant. And there's some honey locust trees behind me in the woods, and that's where they're coming from. So when we originally bought this property, we had a survey done and it surveyed the, the boundary of the property, but we also had them survey each one of the farm fields as well. That way we could sell the farm fields later on if we ever needed to. Um, so the farm field should be marked with a, with a pin on the edge of where the field ends and the trees begin. So that's the pin we're gonna try to find today to be able to use that back over to our corner pin over there and be able to stretch out a string and mark our property line with some T posts.
All right, well, I didn't find the survey pin. That should have been out closer to the field. I couldn't find it. Really want to show you guys what it looked like. So here is a post, a fence post. This is also still got the flags in it from the survey. This is also the property line. And there might be, sometimes they put a survey marker cap and nailed it to these posts. But I don't see one. This is poison oak that's all over it. So I'm not gonna get too close, but I'm gonna use this post and pull a string from this post over to the corner. And that should be good enough to mark the property line. So we got our fence posts in the ground, marking our property line over here. Um, just T posts with two inch white PVC pipe over the top of them. Uh, and uh, the very last one, at the far end, that one was already there. And we just basically drew a line from that white post at the end to our old wooden post over here. And then we put our posts here in the middle. We ended up putting those 10 paces, paces apart. So that's probably somewhere between 25, 30 feet apart from each other. Still big enough that somebody could drive in here but it does clearly mark the property line. And with the white posts, um, it'll be easy to see them even at night. If they're at her farm and at night, they'll still be able to see these posts pretty clearly. So I'm gonna go ahead and call the farmer that farms over here and make sure that he's okay. He can come out here and look at these posts and look at them and make sure he's happy where I have them positioned. And uh, so we both, uh, we both agree uh, that these are in the right place. So this probably won't, you know, people can still drive through here, so it's not gonna completely keep people from trespassing, but hopefully it'll at least get people to stop and think about it before they come onto this property. Because we did get, you know, we got sprayed accidentally a couple uh, years ago, and already this year, this year they've already been on this field, and they were out here with some kind of a spreader, and they were spreading some dry material out here. So uh, hopefully that ended up being fertilizer. Maybe I actually got something beneficial this time, but they were out here spreading again on this field when they shouldn't have have done that. Um, so we've already had them on here once this year. So hopefully these white posts will stop them from coming on here again and, and spraying or spreading stuff on our property. So hopefully we'll get those soil samples back here soon and then we'll know exactly our soil condition in all three of our fields here. And uh, we'll know exactly what we need to do to amend them. And then the first thing we'll do is we'll probably go out there to the pasture. I'd like to get it amended and try to get that pasture where we can start getting it reconditioned and, and growing better. Uh, as far as the brand new hay field that we're going to be planting this year, I won't amend it until closer to the time we plant. I'm planning on planting that um, mid to late Oct uh, August, mid to late August. Uh, so before that, there's still some stuff we can do. So we can clear the brush along the edges. Um, all the trees are going to need trimmed up higher. Even this field, all the trees are going to need to be trimmed up higher. I've got the new tractor back there. It's got a cab on it now. The TYM tractor's got a cab on it. So I'm going to have to do a lot of tree trimming so that I can be able to get right along the edge. So, uh, you know, also I could probably mow back there. There's all that corn stalk material in the ground. I might be able to see if some of that will at least chop up a little bit and keep it mowed down, at least keep the weeds and grass and everything mowed down until we plow it. But uh, anyway, I think that's it for today's video, guys. So thanks for coming along with me today. I hope you guys have a good one. I'll see you next time.